Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable start to your week. It is going to be a very exciting week uh, with me and the things that I do. Uh, very challenging, but definitely uh, exciting nonetheless. Uh, I encourage you uh, to invest the best of yourself into your future. Uh, the future you deserves that. Uh, look, I'm not going to be long. I'm going to get right to it. But uh, as I always remind you, support the work we do. We do so much in the way of research, so much way in the way of our think tank and our programs and services. If you followed me for the last 15 years here online, you know the work we've done 15 years before that and still. Uh, we need your support. This stuff doesn't just happen. It requires resources. So show your love, show your support. Go to the description box. Look at the top of the description box. There are several ways for you to support. Choose the way that works best for you. All right. With that being said, Jason Whitlock. Oh, man, it takes really any time I hear this guy's name, along with a few other names that I hear that are men with black skin uh, that serve a purpose that does not align with black progress and black empowerment. Um, I was once quoted, as a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Blanchard put it in his book, uh, The Book of Black Lamentations. Uh, I was once quoted as, there's nothing more threatening to black progress than a black person with a white agenda. And Jason Whitlock represents that to the umpteenth power. Every now and then, something will come out of his mouth that I agree with. And the truth is the truth. I don't care who says it. And I'm never going to dismiss the truth because of the messenger. Uh, but there are just some messengers that make it very hard to even hear their name, much less listen to what they're going to say. Uh, last week or the week before, whatever it was, I came on and I addressed the whole... Uh, uh, Caitlin Clark and uh, Angel, uh, you know, the thing that was going on with them. And both of them seemed to be okay. But everybody else was in beefs about the fact that um, Angel gave Caitlin her, a dose of her own medicine. Caitlin thought it was, what's up? You know, hey, it's sports, it's competitive. I don't think she should be getting all the backlash she's getting. I don't think she should be getting all the flat. Hey, this is sports. This is what we do. Um, and this is the per person that everybody's supposedly defending. And she did it. And when Angel did it, it was a big problem. I, I addressed that. And I, I, I talked about it. That video is already out there. So I'm not going to get into it. It, it, it is what it is. I'm proud of Angel. I'm proud of LSU. I'm proud of the hard way they, they play. But I'm not going to take anything away from Caitlin Clark. The young lady can play. She can straight out ball. There are some things she can do that you don't really see in the women's game with the range she has. Um, she, she should translate to the next level. Uh, she'll have something to say about some things in the future. Uh, but I love the fact that... Um, LSU didn't back down. They showed up and they played, um, and it is what it is. Uh, I like the way both sides handled it, uh, and I have no problem saying that. Who am I riding with? Of course, I'm I always riding with my people, but I'm not going to sit up and dismiss what I see. The young girl is talented. She's gifted. I like somebody with spunk. I like somebody who feel themselves. And, 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 and I'm like this. If there's a certain part of you that feels yourself, there are going to be people who are going to be able to tell you who you are. So I get that. And they seem to get it. But it's the people who probably never picked up a basketball, probably sucked at sports their entire life, that are out here talking and having an opinion. Now, here's what Jason Whitlock said. I want to read this because I'm going to tell you just how he picks it up uh, and makes a continued issue out of something that should be dying down. The, the young girl came in and she, she point blank said, I'm not tripping about it. If she's not tripping about it, why are everybody else tripping about it? But anyway. Uh, Jason Whitlock says, there's no shortage of basketball role models for black girls, uh, for black kids. There's a glut of them. Don Staley and Angel Reese would rather see the game forego the growth Clark can deliver than to see the spotlight on a white star. Now, 
if that was the flip side, everybody would be saying, don't play the race card. But what he did is he did a reverse idea on racism. First of all, we always, anybody who understands, Neely Fuller Jr. said it decades ago that if you don't understand white supremacy, racism, how it works, how it moves, how it impacts you, everything you think you know will only confuse you. Uh, and so we understand, first and foremost, that we don't own or control nothing at any level for us to ever truly exercise racism. We can be bigots. We can't be racist. We don't control the power mechanism. So we can participate in it against our own, which is what he's doing, but we don't control it. So, but what he does is he try to plays the waste card. It's, it's uh, black athletes trying to dim the shine of a white athlete. No, these are athletes going at each other, and we, both black and white, chose to see the race in it. Because I'll give you a side of it that you probably don't want to hear. If Caitlyn would have been a black girl doing that, black people would have been talking about how jazzy is it. It jazzy it is. But she's a white girl, so, you know, who she thinks she is. Flip side, Caitlyn was the representation of so many white people who are so tired of being dominated in physical sports. To see her come out and put up back-to-back 40-point -back games. And this chick's been balling the whole season. And I don't say chick in a disrespectful way. I'm just saying saying it in a, in, in a flip way, but not, not being disrespectful. This young lady has been balling all season. So then, uh, but let's not forget, so has Angel Reese. Angel Reese broke the record for double-doubles in a season. She's been balling. So... She knows who she is. She fought hard to get what she was. She had a rough uh, couple of seasons down at, uh, what was she, Maryland? I uh, forgot what she signed on at. But she had a couple, couple rough, rough, I know she's from Maryland, but I'm trying to think who she actually signed with initially before she transferred to LSU. But she had a cuff, rough, rough, cuff, a rough couple of seasons there. So, so she understood, and you, you're understanding that uh, Kim Mulkey had, I want to say nine new players transferred in and this is what they do. And so, yes, that was an unbelievable feat. They came in, they balled, they played hard. Uh, Angel Reese had saw what she saw. And any athlete that's seeing that is like, yeah, I'm coming for that. I'm coming for her. Two apex landed on the floor. Only one was going to walk away a winner. The one that walked away flexed. She would have been flexing if she won. But this is what this chump, Jason, oh, yeah, and I went actually on his page that he posted on and ripped his ass. Uh, because And I don't normally do that. What you do on your page is your page. But this is so asinine, and so many people are on there. And, of course, you know those people are lining up. And what you have to understand, this wasn't about Caitlin Clark for Jason Whitlock. Please understand, that's not what this is about. He's not defending Kate, Caitlin Clark. He's not defending the contributions that she's going to make to the game. He's inciting his audience base. His, his target audience are, going, are the ones who will respond to this and go, yeah, that's what they're doing. He's turning it into more of a race issue than it was initially. It was a... It was definitely polarizing. It was a white, predominantly white, black thing. But the thing was more about the behavior than it was about race stated. It was implied. He has personally made it because they are literally willing to forego the growth that Clark can deliver than to see the spotlight on a white star. First of all, it really takes ignorance to even buy into this notion because to say this would be to imply that there haven't been any successful white stars who had the game on a high level. Rebecca Lobo, Sue Bird, uh, Darina uh, Tarazi, um, uh, and, and, and it's a couple of others that just aren't coming to my name that play. Uh, Becky Hammond. I mean, 
they balled. And when they came in, they were trans, uh, they were generational type players. Uh, before her, Becky Hammond was the shooter, lights out shooter. Sue Bird was an all around straight up killer. And so to sit up and say like, this is the first time a white person's landed on the planet that can play basketball is absolutely ridiculous. But that's the way he's trying to make, she's that good that she, she's good. She's as advertised. I'll give her that. But to sit up and say that these players are literally trying to block her shine. No, they're matching her shine. And that's the thing that you got to be very careful with when you look at the conversation and the wording of what's being implied. See, that what's being implied is that how dare you think you can step into her light. Well, she actually stepped into her light and she shine, outshined her that day. There were a couple other play, players that played lights out above what they played all season long. And they did it that day. And that day was all that counted. And that was that that behavior and that celebration was about that day. Two teams fought to get to that point. One team won. The team that won acted like they won. And the thing is, when you sit up and act like she's got some special place, Caitlin Clark that nobody has a right to speak, act, or come into that space and do anything, then you're again dismissing the very nature of sports. You want gladiators, but you want them to act like they're in the boardroom. You got to act. We're going to pretend we don't know where sports comes from. We don't want to pretend that this isn't an old servitude thing that came from ancient times where they competed uh, in coliseums and in, in, in spaces like that. And many times to the death. You don't want to act like that. This is an entertainment for uh, people. And so that entertainment comes with a passion. They're playing their hearts out for something they love. And it comes with a passion. Some of the greatest players, white and black, have been trash talkers. Larry Bird is premium trash talker. Michael Jordan, trash talker. Kobe Bryant, trash talker. But we want Angel Reese to be in her place, especially when it comes to her calling out the white player. And I'm using it now because he did. This couldn't have just have been athletes. And, and I, I could almost feel coming from the hood and being a black man, I can feel what she felt. And yes, Angel Reese had a sense of pride about her blackness, where she came from. She's been hearing all year how ghetto she is, how hood she is, how she doesn't fit the mold, how all of this stuff, she needs to tone it down, all this stuff all year long. And she ain't did nothing but bring double doubles, double doubles. You don't like me. I'm bringing double doubles. I'm, I'm, and she said it. I'm representing the little girls who look like me. And for that, I'm riding with her because it's so easy to fall into this idea that I'm going to be what they expect me to be. Now, the crazy thing is Caitlin Clark isn't the quintessential idea of what they are demanding of, uh, Angel Reese. What they're demanding of her, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark is cocky. She knows she can ball. This is the person that wasn't just doing this. This person told a player, I want to think Louisville play, a little, when they played Louisville, the girl was griping a bitch into the referee. She told her, look, sit down. Y'all 15 points down. It don't even matter. We act like we didn't hear that. We act like we didn't. That was another one when they played Texas. She had, the, she had the girls on that team so right up when they did the handshake at the end of the game. One of them grabbed her hand and got in her face. She handled it. She dismissed it, pushed it off, and just waved it off, kept going. And when they asked her about it, she wouldn't even talk about it. Say, hey, look, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk. She knows how. She knows who she is. She knows a lot of times she's getting in the head of players. Again, that's a part of the game, too. You let her get in your head. You, she's, she's got you out of your game. That's all a part of the game always has been. And it's not just in basketball. But 
Jason Whitlock really needs to be brought to heel because he's that person that has a white audience that paints a narrative of our people that is inaccurate, that is hostile, and it promotes an ongoing misconception about who we are. And he constantly feeds it. He's feeding the monster. He's feeding the monster. We will never make progress in that area. Not that I need permission or acceptance from whites, but we'll never make progress in that area when the people who hold the levers that we need to take hold of so that we can build our own are constantly buying into ideas about us that aren't true. And the truth of the matter is, if we're ever going to truly make moves, they're going to have to be allies built. One of the biggest problems we've always had, we've never built the allies necessary to insulate ourselves from outside external forces that want to move against us. That's how we lost um, Tulsa. That's how we lost Slocum. That's how we lost Wilmington. That's how we lost Rosewood. We know how to build, but we've got to know how to build relationships and allies outside of ourselves that provide the protection, the insulation, the resources, and connectivity we need. Not going to get off of that. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about this chump this joker, this buster, Jason Whitlock. And you got to understand, anytime they're getting their platform, Stephen A. Smith, Charles Barkley, anytime they're giving their platform, it's because they're willing to say things that the, uh, that the power structure wants to be said, but it needs to be said by black people. Malcolm wonders about these type of people. They are the greatest threat. And I said again, the greatest threat to black progress is a black person with a white agenda. Pay attention. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out here. As I said at the beginning of this, if you believe in the work we do, if you believe in the messages, the information, the uh, resources we offer, uh, the research we do, all of that stuff that has we've been doing for years, go to the description box uh, and determine which way you want to give, whether it's Cash App, whether it's the organization's direct donation, or whether it's the GoFundMe account. That's totally up to you. The reason we put GoFundMe is because some people will only give through it, but do understand that they do process, they do uh, charge a processing fee for that. So uh, a portion of it will go towards processing. But if that's the way you want to give, we want to provide the avenue for you to do so. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Thank you.